Welcome all together to our first Aquarian Salon about art, astrology and wisdom teachings. This is our program for today and our team. Frank Berger, you have just heard him already, is a guitar teacher from Berlin, Germany, and he will start the Salon with a live guitar play. My name is Ludger Phillips, I'm living in Switzerland and you will hear more about me later. When Frank has finished his guitar piece, I will speak a mantra, an old Sanskrit prayer for group coherence. Richard Angelus from Central USA will then give an introduction and she will moderate the conversation. Laureen Glass from California. She's operating Zoom and will show you the slides we have prepared. Rosa Fernandez, she's living near New York City. She's taking care of you, the participants, when you want to speak or when you write via chat. She gave me some instructions for you about microphones and participation. During sharing time, when you push the yellow raised hand icon on your video, she will unmute you so that you can speak and she will mute your microphone again so that there is no noised chaos. You can also write your question or comment on the chat. Rosa will read it out loud at the given time for all to hear. If you want to raise your hand to participate, on the button of the screen, go to the smiley face icon that says Reactions. Click on the icon and on the display of reactions you find the yellow hand that says Raise hand and click on it. Okay, wait, there is one. Uh, Rosa, you came later. Wait. I have to stop a moment here. Um, um, so so when you uh, click on the icon to say raise hand and then click on it, your hand will appear on the upper left side of your video image for all to see. When you are done participating, please make sure to click again on the same yellow hand icon and that now will say lower hand. If you want to have a gallery view where you can see everyone on the screen, go to the upper right side of the screen where there is a small square grid with the word view next to it. Click in the grid or on the word view. On the view options menu, click on gallery. If you also want full screen mode, click full screen on the same Men, uh, mon, uh, options menu. So now um, one more thing. At the end of our program, I will speak an invocation of the violet flame. And at the close of the Aquarian Salon, you are warmly invited to the after program exchange if you still have some time. By the way, this is a totally uncommercial activity. You don't have to pay anything. We don't sell anything. And we, the team, are doing all we do here just for the joy of doing. So just enjoy. Frank. So hello again, everyone. When I heard about this idea, Aquarian Salon, I immediately perceived a song about it. It contains the fixed cross, which is um, the Taurus 
the Leo, the Scorpio, and the Aquarius. And so I call this improvisation the fixed crush. Is it's the cross of the disciple. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Thank you very much, Frank. Beautiful. We now will intonate together, if you know, otherwise you just listen, the prayer for group coherence. Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Bunak Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Bunak Tu Sahabiryam Karavabahe Te Jasminavati Tamastu Mavit Vishavahe Om Shanti 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 May we be protected together. May we share and enjoy together. May we work efficiently together. Let there be no hindrances to our enlightenment. Let no malice prevail. Let peace be in all the three planes. So, Riza, you take over now. Thank you. Ligur, thank you, um, Frank, beautiful music. Well, welcome everyone. I want to welcome everyone to our first Aquarian Salon. My name is Risa, and all of us are happy to be together with you today as we inaugurate a new gathering called the Aquarian Salon. As many of you know, Ligur, our friend, is an artist, among other things. And we'll be looking at Ligur's artwork today as, and as we are in our salon, all of us are invited to respond to what we see in Ludger's paintings and have a conversation together. The conversation is about art, astrology, symbols, wisdom teachings, and anything else we'd like to share. But Ludger's art is just the beginning. A salon is about the people who show up and make contact with each other in an atmosphere of curiosity and friendship and love creating stimulating conversation and sharing ideas. It's not going to be a lecture by Luger. Instead, we are going to respond to his paintings, creating an exchange, which is Gemini and Mercury experience, creating each of us a salon experience where everyone's voice is important and everyone's voice is heard. But most of all, let's have fun today. May we be happy and feel safe to talk and be at ease. May we contact with each other, make contact with each other. Contact releases love in our hearts. Let's shake ourselves free from any preconceived ideas or limitations or fears and have fun together. And let's create this Aquarian Salon. Before we look at Ludger's paintings, I wanted to offer some definitions, some backgrounds and some guidelines. I have questions. These are questions I would have if I came into this salon. What is a salon? What's astrology? What's a conversation? What's Aquarius? What are symbols? And what has inspired art down the ages? And what is everyone's part in this salon? This salon today is the first of four. We'll be following the astrological cycles, spring, summer, fall, and winter, and the astrological signs. And since every single thing in person, every event has an astrology chart, let's look at the astrology chart for today. So here we are, today's astrology chart. This was made for the exact time of the beginning of our salon. And we notice that the sun and the moon are in Gemini. The sun and the moon are in Gemini and Lauren's, um, pointing that out for us to look at in case we don't know what that means. 
The sun and the moon are in Gemini. Gemini is an air sign and it loves to talk, to gather, to share information and to make contact. And the Tibetan has written in his blue books to humanity, humanity, make contact. Contact releases love. So let's make contact with each other today. And Gemini moon asks us, what are our feelings today when we gaze at Ludger's paintings? And today's chart is also Scorpio rising. The rising sign is at nine o'clock as if we were looking at a real clock. The rising sign for today is Scorpio. And Scorpio is about things that are hidden. Scorpio, in our conversation together today, as we gaze at the paintings, we can attempt to reveal the hidden messages in the paintings. Scorpio hides everything in symbols. All of Ludger's paintings are filled with symbols and the paintings are teaching, teachings in symbolic form. So today we're going to look at these symbols. We're going to point them out and we're going to talk about them. The next question is what is a salon? A salon is a gathering of people to talk, discuss, have conversations about art, literature, philosophy, the comings and goings of the day in the world. Salons are ruled by Gemini, so it's a perfect day today to begin our salons. Salons began in the 15th century in Italy. They reflected the earlier discussions in the wisdom schools of Aristotle, Plato, Socrates, and Pythagoras. Salons began a conversation within humanity. Humanity began to talk in the public sphere Prior to salons, the people's communication remained in the walls of palaces or homes. There were no public conversations. There were Greek and Roman salons prior to the Enlightenment. The Enlightenment happened in the 17th and 18th and 19th centuries. The salons flourished in France and Italy till the 19th century, and they pioneered a new era called the Age of Reason and it was called the Enlightenment time. As we are now entering a new age and a new era of Aquarius, Aquarius is the age of knowledge and the age of humanity. It's a new stage of enlightenment. So our Aquarian Salon with all of you is a pioneering effort. It's a new conversation unfolding humanity in a new unfolding era. The early Salons gathered in great halls to exchange ideas. Writers, artists, thinkers, and philosophers, just like us, gathered to have conversations, dialogue, and debate. It was during this time, late 18, late 16 and early 17 centuries, that coffee was introduced to the European people. And so coffee shops sprang up. They began to proliferate in, in Europe. And some salons came together in those coffee shops where the newest scholarly scientific information was shared. So the salon is and was about discovery, stories, ideas, creativity, culture, learning, imagination, but most of all, it was the people coming together like we're doing today. The era of the salon created the age of the conversation. And so we're renewing this idea creating a new age of the salon, the salon of the people in conversation with each other about the things of today. There is a salon that occurs in Paris in the Tuileries. This is a public garden in Paris next to the Louvre. It has a gallery for the arts and people gather together there in the Tuileries for conversation about art and gardening and the realities of today. My next question is, what is a conversation? Conversations are ruled by Mercury and Gemini. A conversation is a dialogue. People bring forth their thoughts, their feelings, and their ideas, and they exchange them. In the Socratic dialogue, questions are asked. We can ask questions when we are gazing at Ludger's paintings. Mercury and Gemini help us communicate and have conversations with each other. Our conversations create insight into the paintings. And today, under Gemini, sun and moon, it's a perfect day for us to have a conversation. My next question, what is Aquarius? 
Aquarius is an atmosphere, it's an era, it's a time, it's an age, and it's a constellation. Do we remember the age of Aquarius coming forth in the 60s? Remember that song? In this image, we have a zodiacal ring. In the center is the sun. To the right is the earth. To the right of the earth is the constellation of Aquarius. The atmosphere and the architecture of Aquarius is flowing into the earth. It's flowing into the hearts and minds of humanity. And it will be with us for 2,500 years. And we are just beginning this age of Aquarius. And this age has new laws and principles. Aquarius is about humanity, its freedom, its hopes, wishes, and dreams. A new era new, brings in new archetypes, new patterns, new rituals. It brings in a new language too. And the language of Aquarius is astrology and symbols. Aquarius brings forth humanity's new creative expression through creative living. And so what is astrology? Astrology is the art and science and study of the stars because what is above is reflected down here. Astrology charts show symbols of stars and planets and they tell humanity we are not alone. Astrological symbolism is a central theme throughout the history of art. In this illustration, in this graphic, in this painting, this is the Christ. He's studying his astrology chart and he is seeking to discover the best timing for his reappearance. Astrology is a timing mechanism. And so in our astrology chart, we have symbols and what are symbols and what do they do? Symbols awaken feelings and they awaken the intuition. When we gaze upon them, the symbols open up and lead to an understanding. Symbols are archetypes and they hold vast knowledge that only the heart can understand, not the mind, just the heart. Symbols, art, astrology are timeless ideas given to humanity in visual form. Astrological symbols of the planets and stars, they too tell humanity we are not alone. So our Aquarius Salon will focus on symbols in art and astrology, the symbols seen in Ludger's paintings because symbols contain vast amounts of information. Again, when we gaze upon a symbol, it opens up itself to us. The symbols of astrology have inspired artists since the beginning of time. This is a painting by Nicholas Rorick. It is called Symbols of the Christ. There is a story that the Christ was walking in the desert one day and he met an, an Arabic man and they talked together. And Christ sat down and drew these symbols in the sand and they revealed the time and circumstances of the Christ's reappearance. So down the ages, Renaissance art, Jewish art, Islamic, Arabic art, European art in Italy, the domes of the Medici family chapel. There is art and this art intersects with astrology. And many artists have included astrological imagery and symbols in their paintings. The astrological symbols hide yet reveal wisdom teachings and we'll see this in Ligure's paintings. Their art is documented in ancient old books, but it's also seen in castles, palaces, town halls, cathedrals. Many, many, many zodiacal art pieces are hidden out in the world in plain sight. Early architecture was inspired by astrology. This is really a hidden means of teaching humanity. Again, down the ages, astrological symbols guided artists. They inspired artists since the beginning of time. From prehistoric cave art to our present 20th, 21st century, 
Astrology and symbols inspired the art of the Renaissance, of Michelangelo, of Raphael. More presently, astrological art influenced Salvador Dali, Hilma of Clint, and Andy Warhol. Here is an interesting illustration by Andy Warhol. He actually made a book of astrology symbols, and he calls this astrology for the cocktail hour. This is an illustration of Gemini, the twins. He wrote that Geminis have stars in their eyes, and they do. Warhol created a book of illustrated horoscopes called Horoscopes for the Cocktail, Cocktail Hour. And you can see each one of these beautiful pages if you go to the Andy Warhol Museum. So now let's turn to Ludger's paintings. I'm going to invite everyone in the salon to gaze at his paintings and then to begin to have a conversation, to add your voices, your ideas, your thoughts and your feelings. What do you see? With Ludger's paintings, we're following an ancient lineage of artists who embed astrology, wisdom, and symbols in their paintings. These offer messages to those viewing the paintings. So what is our part in this salon? What is everyone's part? First, let's, uh, let us imagine we're gathering in an ashram gallery salon. We're in a beautiful room together and all around us are paintings. They're Ludger's paintings. We're happy to be with each other and we are having a conversation together about what we see. We're creating an atmosphere of love, of beauty, of curiosity, of questions, of imagination. How do we approach these paintings? As the paintings are placed up on the screen, we can gaze at them and consider these questions. What symbols do I see in the painting? What do I, what do I notice in the painting? What information does it seem to be in this painting? Do the symbols mean anything to me? Do the symbols, do they, do they awaken anything within me? When I gaze at the paintings and I look at the symbols, do I sense and feel anything? What might the artist be trying, what might the artist be trying to convey? What questions do I have about the painting? So these are questions we can consider as we gaze at the paintings and take our time to look at them. As we consider these questions, remember to raise your hand if you want to respond or type your message in the chat. And now let us begin to turn to Ludger's paintings. Oh, first let's look at this page. This is a beautiful artistic page with a painting of Luger. First, I want to point out Luger's. I want to point out Luger's signature, and then I want to point out his symbol, and then I'm going to read his quotes. The images in my paintings originate from an idea. The idea leads to a diff to different stages of expression. And the original is the idea, and this original idea cannot be sold or, so or bought. The original is the idea, and this original idea cannot be sold or bought. And now let's look at the painting. Gemini, two pillars. What do we see in this painting? This painting is rich in symbolism. Gemini, the two pillars of the temple. Note the sun and the crescent moon. Note something between the two of them. Something is between the two of them, connecting the sun and the crescent moon. The two pillars are like two people talking with each other. They're having a conversation. Notice the light in the dark. Notice the mountain behind the temple. Notice the temple and the checkered floor. What does that floor mean? Does anyone see anything else in the painting? And now we're going to enter the gallery of Ludger's art. We'll begin with Aries, followed by Taurus and Gemini, with a little Scorpio thrown in. And so here is our first painting, it's Aries. 
Let's gaze at this painting and begin our sharing and our conversation. And so again, what do you see? What symbols do you see? What do you feel when you look at the paintings? Let's give ourselves time to gaze at the paintings. And remember to raise your hand if you want to share and you will be unmuted by Rosa or you can share a message in chat and your message will be read. Okay, I'm turning this over to everyone else in the salon, our conversation. Sometimes it takes a bit of time for people to reorient to listening, from listening to then being asked to respond. So we'll take a bit of time for everyone to look and then people will begin to communicate with each other. You can just say, I see this in the painting or uh, what does that mean? Or, well, that looks like the horns of some sort of animal or is that a sun or is what is in the painting? So now I'm gonna turn it over to everyone else. Rosa. Hey, Anna, uh, I'm going to re, um, unmute Anna who wants to participate. I have to find it in the... Uh, um, okay, give me a second to find uh, Anna. Okay, Anna. Yes, you can speak. Unmute. Uh, re, lower your hand, Anna. Can you do that? And is not unmuted, Rosa. Oh, I asked her to. Oh, can you, uh, Anna? I'm asking you to unmute yourself. Oh, uh, okay. You, okay. You're muted again. Oh no! Should be free. As soon as I unmute, I don't know what happens. It goes back on mute. How do we put Anna's hand down? We can. Um, there is I a little. Okay. Thank you. Um, so we're learning as we go, everyone. Uh -huh. Okay, I see the bright light at the center, like a sun blazing forth. It feels like staring at the sun, it's so bright. And I see the Aries glyph, the symbol of the ram with the two horns sprouting up, the fountain head. And I see a large circle and that sun is like, a, the, the center of the circle. Those are the first things that stand out for me. Thank you. Um, uh, Mark Ray. Um, okay. Hi, hi everyone. Can you hear me? Um, I also see the symbols for Aries and the sun. Aries is fire sign. And the colors I see are very much in tune with Aries. Um, the bright spot, uh, it looks like the sun and uh, the bright spot in the center reminds me of possibly the central spiritual sun. Thank you. Can you lower your hand, Mark? Um, Theresa? Um, yes, I see some of the th same things that have already been um, mentioned. Um, the circle, it looks like a sunrise to me. Um, and with the Aries symbol um, of the ram's horns, um, there's a circle then around the sun with the bright light in the middle, which reminds me of the this, this symbolism for the monad. Um, um, because, let's see, it. I interpret it to be sunrise um, and with Aries um, beginning new things um, and the beginning of a day um, leads me to feel, uh, have feelings of hope and anticipation and positivity for the upcoming day. Can you lower your hand, um, Teresa? 
Thank you. There is a message on the chat from Rebecca. She is asking a question. Do stars represent constellation Aries? Yes. This is the, the, uh, the outline of the uh, Aries constellation. And she is also sharing that she sees the monad. The sun is the uh, principle of the monad, yes. Uh, Mercy, uh, you can speak. Hi, thank you. Let me take away my hand there. Um, I see, or I feel a lot of the stuff Teresa said, I feel like it's a rising sun. Um, and the feeling that gives me is potential. I just feel a lot of like potential with that rising sun. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Alexa says she sees a head, outline of a head there. And we know that uh, Aries rules the head. There are some messages in the chat. Do you want to read them, Rosa? Yes. Amy is saying that... Um... I see a person in a space suit in the center, walking on the surface. Behind is like a geyser blowing through or a protective shield. Um, Uh, Rebecca, I feel tremendous energy in this image. See the life force and the will of a great beginning. Andre, there is a big circle where in the middle, where in the middle, the sun is rising. This is a circle. Um, Rosa, Adams says he does not see where to raise his hand or raise her hand, her hand. Oh, okay. So there is a, what he says, reactions. Can you see a little uh, icon with a smiley face that says reactions underneath? I have it now. I have my hand raised. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. I didn't Thank see that. You. I was looking at the chat. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Um, I thought they were coming. I have to look. Give me a second here. Um, okay. I don't see one moment. Um, sorry. Oh, here, okay, okay. Okay, Adams, go ahead. Uh, that's Cheryl, her name is Cheryl. Oh, Cheryl, go ahead, yes. Thank you. Well, what I see in this image, um, the feeling that I get from it with it being Aries, um, being uh, kind of the astrological beginning of the year. I um, see the Aries glyph like springing forth uh, exuberantly out of the earth and uh, sending its sending its new seeds out into the universe. The exuberance of Aries. Uh, Pamela on the chat says, I see solar flares from the bottom of the circle. And Galaxy says, also I see the constellation like pearls around the sky. Uh, Andre Drobek, a lot of rays coming from the circle. Uh, sales iPhone, the rising sun seems to represent the rising of awareness, the beginning of all things new. Rebecca, I feel tremendous energy. No, one second. I feel tremendous energy in this image. See the life force and the will 
of a great beginning. Um, Laura uh, Kelly, I feel a fiery energy emanating from this image and the colors give me a feeling of warmth. Uh, Andre, violet flames coming from the back of the sun. Um, Isabella, I see a heart in the center of the glyph. There is a woman, Laura Liz Torres says, also I see the constellations like pearls around the sky. Thank you very much for the feedbacks. And there was a question how I do these paintings. First of all, uh, um, this is all developed autodidactically. Um, I did paintings in the 80s uh, with uh, acrylic colors and so, but then had a long pause. And this met method, which I'm now using, uh, I developed myself. It is a mixture between uh, physical and uh, digital. Um, I, for this image, um, I was flying uh, on a Christmas morning from Delhi to Bangalore and there was a beautiful sunrise and I shot several photos of the sun and uh, fused two photos of it and the reflections there with the camera uh, gave this impression of solar flares and it was I was happy that these solar flares came in and also the, and then the, uh, I constructed this sphere of the uh, uh, sun, the field with a um, light violet background. I built these images. I, I, I saw, I realized years ago that I cannot get these brilliant colors uh, on the physical plane. When I use uh, pa uh, pictures on, on paper, uh, they do not radiate enough. Uh, so I uh, built up in Photoshop uh, uh, the image um, with many layers. N normally you do not see how many layers are there, but uh, in simple details, simply constructing the image. Then I print it out on aquarel paper and um, work on it with pencils. And so therefore you see this radiance and so especially the transitions of colors are all worked out with pencils. And then I do a high resolution scan of the, uh, from the aquarium paper. It is a, a small format, uh, a C5 format. And then with this high resolution scan, um, I um, put, come back to the computer. And then I work on details, and especially I increase very much uh, the contrast and um, get the uh, colors as brilliant as possible so that they do not go into the contrary. And at this moment of uh, intensest um, uh, radiance, I start printing them out again with a color paint a printer uh, on a photo uh, paper and then I observe if the colors are well represented and uh, then on the uh, uh, photo paper I see what I have to modulate again on the computer so that it can be uh, on screen or when I put the high resolution also for free download on the web that people can print it out and uh, make a large size image of it or uh, look at it digitally or you make any print out that the color is as radiant as possible but each screen each way of reproducing from the original changes the colors so what i see in one uh, photo program is different what i see in another photo program on my own screen and it is difficult to define for me what is the color which is represented there. So when I print out, it is also my printer. Another printer gives other colors. So there's always a great variation of colors, but this, this is part of the manifestation process. And so I try to find a middle path 
uh, to uh, communicate the radiance. And with the symbols in the image, uh, I often use prayer to get things down, to, to meditate on them uh, for days. The longest part of the pro uh, creation process is the inner preparation before it comes down into the image which I will paint. It sometimes takes one, two weeks where I'm pondering on the image, but it doesn't reveal. Suddenly it uh, comes down and then I start to arrange it uh, in the computer and uh, uh, and work on it. Sometimes it is very fast, sometimes it takes longer time and I have to observe and observe again uh, until the things are fine. Uh, we have a question from Anna. Yeah, thank you, Ludger. I have a question for you. Okay. Considering that Aries relates to Scorpio through the planet Mars, and considering that it is Scorpio rising, and considering there is a Scorpionic feeling to me, I'm wondering if you could talk about what is hidden in this image. <laughs> and by that, I mean, it is on the surface about light and brilliance yes. and radiance. And yet we know in esoteric teachings that the sun veils yes. like the moon veils and the sun is not yet a sacred being, yes. meaning it is going through initiations like the earth and like we are. And so my question is, what is hidden in the sun? What else is being veiled here? What are the hidden scorpionic meanings behind what appears to be so obvious on the surface? A very good question, Anna. Thank you. Um, I am often very much surprised and I might not be able to unveil everything. I observe and observe and I often discover things after I finish the painting, which are in the painting, which I did not consciously bring in. And so I was, I felt very uh, interesting what you described to see there. And it's always interesting for me to discover a painting, which I do not know myself. I know from uh, wisdom teachings, I read uh, tons of books and uh, studied uh, uh, esoteric and spiritual astrology. And so, although I do not consider myself as an astrologer, I more work with inner images and visualization. And um, in this, um, yes, Scorpio is always the hidden power in both, uh, you know, mass. Uh, mass energy is there and this eruptive energy is also with the will power. All what is in there is also the bursting forth of manifestation of the will. And um, in so far, uh, hidden from the bottom, shooting up from the bottom, uh, Scorpio, uh, uh, and to the top, this uh, is the hidden energy of Scorpio, um, my Saturn and my Mercury are in Scorpio. <laughs> And uh, so this is uh, certainly something which is linked in it, but uh, I always try to avoid too much of concepts. I wanted first only to have the images and I was painting images and when I showed them to people, there was no reaction. They did not understand the people whom I showed to. In my surrounding, uh, the people didn't understand. No, for years I felt uh, there's nobody to understand. But uh, I started then to do descriptions. I took extracts also from the wisdom teachings, uh, which are expressing what is there expressed in the painting. But at the same time, this is um, a mental approach with, or, or a higher mental even, uh, when it comes from the wisdom teachings, but it does not represent what is manifest. And so you can use your own intuition and ponder on it and uh, not say, oh, now I know. Just discover, experience. This is Aquarius, surprise. Uh, Frank? Uh... 
Yes, uh, I'm very much with you, Anna, with the idea to look for the opposite. And so what I discovered uh, and what moved me very much is the frame of this image. I know it is by chance. The, the, the real image is limited to the um, bright orange and red color, right, Ludka? But this was my version, yes, but then Laureen came and yeah. did the background, and yes, I found it very interesting. We thinking, spoke about colors, but I, she did I it then. I was perceiving very much the background, and it goes from deepest dark yes. to shining blue, um, deep blue, and this symbolizes very much and the idea of the scorpionic background, which is hidden, from this yeah. obviously very bright and fiery yes. image. Yes, we exchanged Lauren and me, and I proposed to do something in, in, in such a direction, but she uh, did these backgrounds. So it was also for me fascinating to see um, on my website all is with a blue, dark blue background. But this uh, transition from darkness to bright, bright blue, I found it very uh, interesting. Yeah. We have a share it from Byron. Uh, I see the will of God coming out as creation and Aditi as the cosmic sun rising in the Brahmanda egg. Red is full of light, life, and vigor, indicating explosion of the creation that is about to happen going forward. The light is red and yellow, showing love as the background of the creation, and pink is about instant healing during the creation and growth so that growth is not stunned or inhibited. <clears throat> Shall we go to the next image? I, wa <clears throat> I wanted to say something before Aries is over. So Aries is called the light of life itself. Mm. It's called the dim point of light around at the center of a new cycle of manifestation. And this light, to most people, is faint and flickering. But this light is the searchlight of the logo, and it seeks what can be used for divine expression. And as disciples, we say to this light, let us be used for divine expression. Thank you. Okay, we can go to the next one. What do we see here? What symbols do we see here? Another point of light. Uh, Andre, uh, cross um, I the middle, cross I the middle. The cross in the middle. In the middle, yes. Cross in the middle. I see this geometric form here, a geometric form like a double pyramid. What do we know about this double pyramid? Doesn't it have a name? It starts with an O. Yeah, there are different names. Hmm. Kapura is one Indian name. <laughs> but it doesn't help you, the name. Um, isn't it an eight-sided? Four mm. on the top and four on the bottom would make yes. octahedron. Is that what it might be? Uh, after Hedron. Uh, Laura? Yes, I see the the Taurus, the horns at the bottom, what look like horns, so I can see them. And it's so blue and some colors of violet and then rainbow in the middle. And this little brilliant, this brilliant light right in the center.
Lilian says a tetrahedron also. And Frank, horns of the bull. Pamela says tetrahedron, flower of life, Merkaba, between the bull's horns. Andre, a big red egg in the middle, like a circumference. Laura Liz, a sacred geometry, um, uh, a temple of Solomon, Solomon the, 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 the shape, and um, offering protection with rays of light. Uh, Frank, eye of the ball. Mark Ray, uh, a double four-sided pyramid makes me think of a Torian immersion in materiality and also the potential for reaching to the highest. In the center, I see the light of the third eye, which reveals all. Byron, global pyramid is octahedron, Pythagorean air element. Andre, there is a big circle where in the middle the sun is rising. And Rebecca says, I see the seven rays encased in double, sorry, in double pyramid as above, so below. And Laura Kelly, a diamond light. Andre, a violet circle in the background. Isabella, the double pyramid is also the six directions. Sals, Salas, this is Carol. I see the mantra of Four Torres, the center, the center of light. Sorry, the center light of the third eye is surrounded by the rainbow light I see. And when the eye open, opens, all is light. Andre, there is a big circle where in the middle, the sun is rising. Laura, each little light star in the background forms a cross also. Birke. I see the cosmic egg and the double pyramid inside the Shiva Lingam and Alderaban as the eye of the ball. Uh, Pamela, the bottom apex is dark while the top apex is open and clear, density to light. <coughs> The Taurus is considered the penetrating light of the path. It takes that light, that point of light in Aries, streams forth, that point of light that streams forth from Aries, and it provides the pathway of light. And yes, that Aldebaran light and that light of the third eye. That light emerging from the third eye of the disciple uplifts and transforms everything it touches. Reyes, it's a big being with a serious brilliant light in his earth, protected by fire and violet flame inside a octahedron, Rudra, that is another protection in the universe, emerging from the cosmos for manifesting the earth, for manifesting in the earth. Rudra, is there anything you want to say about this? Mm -hmm. Ligur, is there anything you would like to say about this part? Yes. Mm. The reddish sphere, which you see in the background, which is part of the title, is a lingam. And this lingam is the first sphere in manif manifestation of, from out of the background. It is uh, Master Kumar's book on Rudra. And Rudra is the will. And the will 
is described as a roar coming from the background, a vibration in space. And this vibration in space um, is in the zodiac Rohini, that which roars. Rohini is Aldebaran. And from out of the roar, the sphere opens into manifestation. And when it comes to manifestation, you get the different dimensions. And here you see the cross in the center, and then you see, you see the directions up and down, down, and in space, this form of the double pyramid uh, manifests, and inside this field of the will. And in, in the center of the will is the eye of the bull. The bull itself, uh, uh, the will is expressed as Shiva in the East. And Shiva, uh, this will coming forth, uh, is uh, uh, in one aspect this uh, um, manifested as Rudra. Rudra that who roars, uh, he who roars. And um, this is a sound coming into manifestation. And the bull, Taurus, is the, um, the, the, the bull on which Shiva rides. Uh, it is in, in the Eastern symbolism, Shiva is sitting on a bull or in front of a temple where you see a bull and it is standing ex in exact axis to the Shiva Lingam inside the temple. And uh, this uh, Lingam inside the uh, Holy of the Holies is always, the, the bull is always totally focused on it for reception of the will. So the, the, the horns are like the reception of the will energy from Arius and the red color of Arius, here now in the bluish color of uh, Taurus, um, brings down the will into uh, the manifestation and then into the dimensions. So from Arius to Taurus, you come to this will aspect. And this I tried to visualize by building up uh, uh, these horns of the bull, which I photographed in front of a temple in India. And then I constructed, the, I put at the center um, a photo from Rohini from Aldebaran, uh, opening the dimensions, and then this double pyramid, a space opening. It is said when you put these um, double pyramids, six of them together, you get the perfect cube with all the centers of the, the triangles in it. It is an occult uh, visualization exercise. Um, and this is, understood as the first manifestation or in manifest the structures uh, coming into manifestation. Lilian um, in the chat, it seems there is a lotus and the light comes out yes. of its center. Yes, at the very middle there is a lotus. Lotus is the symbol of flourishing, of uh, growth. So from the flower, from the point, comes out this principle of unfoldment, the lotus. And then comes the seven rays, the, the colors of the rainbow surrounding, and the central axis. You see in most of my paintings, the central axis, this vertical orientation of manifestation from the most sublime to the dense one. And uh, so you, you see, also can see from the, out of the darkness from the bottom up, then into the lighter sphere. You see also in the background um, subtle spheres, uh, circles, the, the aura into which this manifestation expresses itself. We can see how profound these symbols are as we gaze at these paintings and how deep we can go with them. Shall we go to the next painting? This is Gemini, group consciousness, merging and emerging. Look at those Gemini light beams. It reminds me of um, Gemini has stars in its eyes. Look at those Gemini light beams. Gemini is the light of interplay. It's the line of light beams. It reveals all polarity and uh, it reveals the conscious light of the back and forth of relationships. What do we see in this painting? Uh, 
Andre, I see a lot of people in the picture. Um, Anna? A lot of people in relationship. Yeah. People relating to each other. Yeah, I see um, or I feel, see and feel movement, a lot of movement in this painting. Um, it feels like a coming down with the rays from the light above. And it feels like a going up with the globes, with the bubbles, the circles. So to me, there's a lot of movement, the people in the, I guess, background coming together, going up. It's like a cycle. Movement is what stands out to me. Um, Lauren? I see lots of ray too, the blue, just so much blue. I can see the blue and those, those rays coming down. Thank you. Um, um, Adams. Um. Well, I see a lot of circles. Um, and it wake, makes me want to utter own. Oh. <laughs> An interesting answer, Cheryl. All those big O's, those big O's, sparkling light. Circles of consciousness going up the Alexis says circles of consciousness going up the Antakarana. Mark Ray in the chat. When I think of Gemini, I think of unity through diversity. I see both the diverse people and perhaps the many lights representing different ideas and approaches to reality. Mm. Rebecca? Yeah, I feel the energy of all the bubble forms, uh, interrelating, communicating, all that um, Gemini, finding the information, sharing the information, um, a lot of activity. Um, I'm curious what the, uh, there's a form, almost looks like a sea creature on the left side of the bubbles in gold. And is that, yeah, I don't know what that is, but um, it's a very beautiful image and I appreciate Luca sharing it. Laura Liz in the chat, a group living picture in meditation and wisdom going down to the group as light. Lillian, I am wondering if there are symbols within those bubbles. Teresa, the individual people coming together to the light and then their light source or soul returning to the original source. Birka, I see all light bubbles. They give me kind of a champagne, champagne feeling, the lifeness of Gemini. The champagne feeling, yeah. Champagne. Bubbly. Uh, Rebecca? Sorry. Uh, I just, um, it's, Interesting, I, I was just typing, I didn't know I was going back on, but I see faces on either side of the stream of bubbles coming down. I see people, lots of people, which I missed earlier. Um, so all that interconnectedness, really interesting how he wove those images into the painting so subtly. Frank? I sense it uh, might be a fire ritual uh, conducted by Master Kumar uh, at the Mako somewhere. I see very familiar faces in shadows. Uh, it's just the impression, impression I have. And Mako is um, the most important um, mm -hmm. day of the year for the Aquarian age people. 
So this is my spontaneous reaction. It's Master Kumar right on the side. I see there, and he's conducting a fire ritual for all the people around. Andre, in the chat, there is a big circle where in the middle, the sun is rising. Rebecca, I am now seeing faced in the blue areas, faces in the blue areas. Isabella, love the idea of the fire ritual here. Victor, would you like to say anything about this painting? Yes. I'm thrilled to hear your different perspectives and there's much I heard from you which was in my mind when doing the painting. In the background, there is a photo of a group living in Samos when we were at the caves where Pythagoras was living. Samos is a Greek island in front of Turkey. And you see Turkey in the background, but the island is, is before. And we were sitting there with the, at the end of the group living um, in an amphitheater for a group photo. But I tried to anonymize uh, the faces, although Frank discovered some. And I also see that you cannot totally anonymize uh, the people. But I just wanted um, Germany is the energies pour out for humanity. And it is uh, the title Merging and Emerging. Uh, when you intonate OM, it is about intonating OM. You build a, a funnel into space. It goes up uh, into space. And through this funnel, uh, um, we invoke energies. And the energies pour down. And on the, uh, on the other movement, it is uplifting to the souls. So what comes down is at, uh, the, um, also at the same time for the humans uplifting. And these are the subtle energies or um, you can say the devas here, yeah, which I try to depict with orbs. It is a photo from many oil lamps, which I took in India, flames. And therefore also it was not a fire ritual, but these were flames from oil lamps, which I fused here. And um, during the Guru Puja celebration, they were standing there in the front and I took photos, many photos. It was so thrilling to see these oil lamps standing there. And um, then I worked on this radiation pouring down, but also the upward movement, uh, um, which was symbolized the oil lamps are standing for the individual souls, uh, fusing to the group soul here. So all these different colors come together. Therefore. Uh, I worked with a pencil the different colors in, and it is certainly fine also to see images there. It is always uh, the one's own imagination and one's own visualization which is triggered through the images. And so uh, this is an interaction when you look at it and when you see something in it, uh, our mind is seeing but it is uh, an interaction between the painting and what you experience inside. And so it was a meditation, uh, med uh, meeting, it was intonating about Om. I, I was, um, I read, of course, with the Tibetan books, he speaks about creating this funnel in the teaching of Master Kuma. You find about this funnel being created when you intonate in a group, the Om, and invoke energies in, from above through this funnel. So this is here in the center of the image. Uh, two messages in the chat. Uh, Teresa, I love the idea that Master Kumar is present. Isabella, Samos, I think St. John wrote Apocalypse is there. Yes. And Master Kumar is there sitting behind. I did hide him, he's not visible. It is, uh, Patmos was, was uh, St. John, but uh, it's another island. But here Samos is uh, where uh, Pythagoras was giving his teachings. And there's a big, huge statue of uh, Pythagoras uh, in the harbor. Yeah, Lilian says Patmos, actually. Yes. He wrote the book of Revelations there. Mm -hmm. St. John of Patmos. 
in mm -hmm. Samos wrote the book of Revelation for. Mm -hmm. Should we go on? Should we go on to the next painting, Lauren? And what do we see here? Many different levels here. Um, and the title is Scorpio, the seven, I can't see the title, Lauren. The seven kingdoms of nature. The seven kingdoms of nature, Scorpio. The Seven Kingdoms of Nature. Quite a few symbols here. What do we see, everyone? Anna? Yeah, thank you. Let me lower my hand. Um, I see, as the title says, the kingdoms of nature. So the, the mineral, I noticed the, the gems at the bottom where the lotus is. And then the plants, almost like lily pads and the grass and the lotus, the plant kingdom, and then the animals. Can't quite tell all the animals, but it seems like mammals and snakes. Scorpion, scorpion maybe. Scorpion, okay. And then humanity. And this time humanity is facing away from us. The other paintings had people facing us. So there's another movement of people walking or going there's an upliftment, like Ludger had said, and then the earth, and then the star people, the higher kingdoms, and the central axis stands out to me, like Ludger had mentioned, there's all the vertical as an emphasis. So I think there's an encouragement through your paintings, Ludger, that we are on a journey upwards. There's an upliftment. Thank you. Um, Lilian, uh, there is again the lotus holding, receiving the light. Andre, there is a big circle where in the middle. Oh. Rebecca, humanity moving towards the light. Scorpio is called the light of day, that bright light there. Perhaps that's serious. It's the place where two lights meet. The light of fun, the light of the soul, and the light of life itself. In Scorpio, these three lights, they meet, they blend, and they rise up. Everything seems to be rising up here, as well as also pouring down. And the kingdoms are very apparent, all the kingdoms. Uh, Lauren? You're muted. Sorry, I sorry, I clicked twice. Okay. I faintly see some fishes, it looks like, in this area below the painting. So I thought that was really interesting. Again, the animal kingdoms, or maybe it means something else, but I can see a little fish outline here at the mm -hmm. bottom towards the right. Joanne. Oops, I'm sorry, everyone. Uh, Joanne, from mud to light. Mark Gray, the lotus rooted in matter, reaching for the light. Berke, the different levels in the picture symbolize also the chakras. The chakras, yes.
Uh, Ligger, would you like to say anything about this painting? Yes. Um, Laura is just saying something also. Uh, Laura Liz, mineral as amethyst holding the lotus. Lotus, Scorpio, humanity in the direction of two light. Mm -hmm. In the direction towards the light. Yes. Lilian, are the yellow and pink planets specific ones? Question. Mm. No, these are not specific planets, but you see here from mineral, plant, animal, human, planetary, uh, solar, and cosmic systems. Uh, and the, um, these seven uh, kingdoms of nature, there are three kingdoms below mankind, humanity. This is the mineral, uh, plant, and animal kingdom. And there are three kingdoms above. And man is standing, or humanity is standing in the middle. So the, um, um, the, the planetary, the our planet, the solar system, and then the cosmic system. So we are standing there in the middle. At the bottom, the, the violet color as the densest of the colors uh, reflected with the amethyst. And out of this metal comes the flower, its transformation. So the lotus uh, rising, not out of water, but out of metal. So uh, the crystal there, and it is surrounded by a field of blue. I created a, a green. I created this sphere or the bluish sphere behind from a photo of Venus. And um, the fish, which Laureen rightly saw, is that there are animals from the watery kingdom coming to land. And um, the photos uh, there, these are coaties. Um, we were, had several group lives in Iguazu at the great waterfalls. And there were these animals running around. And there's no Scorpio, but the, uh, the, their tails were up and they were running around the people. And uh, this is uh, like, uh, they, they go a step higher. They want to, to go to the Hume or Amir, and they would like to come out and, and rise to the next kingdom. There's this sphere, the brownish sphere with the coaties, and then uh, um, a group of people, they were standing and looking, uh, observing the rising sun. I took away all uh, the elements of this uh, scene where they were standing, but just looking to the sun, looking from the planet to the next, the greater system, the solar system. And from there, you see in the background then the cosmic system in the uh, dark blue sphere, the stars. So from uh, uh, this path, the central axis is leading uh, from the bottom to the top through the different uh, uh, kingdoms of nature. <clears throat> Thank you, Ludger. Oh. Anna? Yeah, so Ludger then, is humanity like the bridge with the three lower kingdoms between the three lower kingdoms and the three higher kingdoms? Mm -hmm. yes. Which makes me think of the throat center Yes, as exactly. humanity as the throat center bridging. Yes. So our work to steward the earth and the animals and the minerals and reach as high as we can towards the higher kingdoms yes. to um, do that bridge. Yes, and it says also in the teaching, humanity is um, um, the bottleneck for the others to uh, ascend because we do not turn to the higher, or only very few turn to the higher. Humanity is largely stuck in matter and not looking upwards to the next one and not helping downwards. They see themselves as the kings of uh, uh, the kingdoms, but they are not they are in the middle. And they should help downwards and orient themselves upward. And therefore, uh, this movement there, and it, it says uh, that the lower cannot evolve because humanity is the bottleneck and is not going up and thus helping to move upwards. So this is um, uh, the ones who look upward, he is standing there 
as a, a small selection or representatives of humanity looking to the light, but the majority is not. I uh, put there, I created the forest like structure from a photo of grass. And uh, this uh, is like the uh, life on the planet there, but um, somehow um, it is, uh, yes, it is in a process, but this process is, yes, in process. Yeah, the bottleneck concept is very powerful. Yes. And that feels very um, important today in the bottleneck that we are in before the sweep forward, before the expansion in uh, creativity, in the evolutionary process. There, we're at a bottleneck, which is like a birth canal going through the throes of labor that we're in. So thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> um, thank you. Um, it's interesting to me as I am as I am holding the energies from the first to the fourth um, paintings. In the in the first one, that that pinkish was very disturbing to me as an as an energy. Not very. It was disturbing to me in the harmony. The second one was very soothing. I was just, and then the moment in the third and in the fourth humans came into the picture i could feel um dissonance within the greater energetic uh container so um thank you for mentioning the bottleneck word because it, it did make um it, it did make a sense to me and i put it all together mm -hmm. Um, I just wanted to share that uh, Master Kumar has mentioned a few times that uh, Iwazu Falls is are the, the the throat center of the earth. Say that again, Rosa, because I didn't understand. Oh, the Master Kumar has said a few times that uh, Iwazu Falls in uh, between Argentina and Brazil are the throat center of the earth. Rosa, can you spell that in the chat? Oh, sure, yes. Um, it's where large rivers come together. Yes, yeah. Um, Seven rivers. Yeah, it does not show in the picture, but there are three, uh, three uh, four, two rivers crossing. It is between three countries and um, uh, they, they have also many crystals and shops. This um, big uh, amethyst cr uh, crystal I photographed there in a shop. <clears throat> I think we are coming to a close. We have many more paintings I've now done. I'm working in the 14th cycle of uh, zodiacal images. So we had uh, planned to have um, ten, uh, three, three plus one series, but we just went through three. And I think we have enough for future cycles. What shall we do, Risa? What do you propose? Let us go to the White Island and finish up. With yes, the yes, just go forward, the last one. Well, everyone, this is our last slide today for the day because we've used up all of our time. Next time, maybe we will extend our time together for two hours. And this is our very first attempt and we're learning how to do everything today. So this is called the White Island. What do we see here? Does everybody know what the White Island is? There's a clue. 
underneath the head of this great being is a mountain. What might it be? And underneath that mountain is a country. And oh. What is the white island? Frank says India, uh, Brian Biden, Himalayas, Andre, I see the country of India also, India. Brazil, uh, Lilian, Himalayas. Um, Anna? Oops. And does anybody, yes, the White Island is Shambhala. So what do we see here in this painting? Well, I see the, um, the seven again in the flames with the seven colors, the seven rays, the seven planes, <clears throat> the seven chakras, relating to the things we just talked about with the seven kingdoms. And like people have said, Shambhala in the Himalayas above India. And it looks like a Buddha to me with the Ajna center emphasized. Frank says Sanat Kumara, uh, Chintamani. So what is Chintamani? Does, can anyone explain that to us? Because some of us might not know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Rudger, can you tell us what Chintamani is? Chintamani. Yes, and I can explain what I did in this painting because it seems to be difficult for some people. And it is like an inner view and not an outer view. Although outer elements are there, it is an inner view and not depicting this comes and this comes and this comes. Um, it uh, says here the White Island and the White Island is a state of consciousness, of purest consciousness on earth. The, where the most, there's the most sublime plane of earth, and it is a field of radiant light. And it is called Sveta Dvipa in the east, the White Island. And it is identified with Shambhala. Shambhala is this state of highest consciousness on earth, where the Lord of the planet resides, Sanat Kumara. And he, he said to be surrounded uh, by a group of very sublime beings, which I depicted here as the flames and with all the colors here. And um, you see, of course, India in the bottom, but then it goes up. There's a sphere of the Himalayas, but it goes beyond the Himalayas. I took an image of Himalayas, but I also took other photos which are merged beyond. And uh, it goes higher and higher. It is not a geographical order. It is an inner order. And um, there is um, the Lord of the world depicted. And it is from a photo uh, I got from pictures from a journey uh, of friends to uh, Mount Kailash. And I first thought that it uh, was a a Buddha picture from uh, Tibet, but I think from the sequence of images which I just went through, it must have been in Nepal. But I you did use it not to be depict the Buddha or so, but I depicted uh, Sanat Kumara, and there are no photos around. <laughs> and, um, and he said to wear Chintamani on the uh, his front. It is a, a supra cosmic. Uh, a crystal or a diamond on earth, a representative of the co link, cosmic link and wearing it there as his uh, third eye. And so I constructed this sphere on his forehead on, uh, in, in this face. And this statue had a crown. And this is a, as a symbol of the Lord of the world. And um, so he is the link to higher spheres, but he stays on earth to open 
the way for the souls to move up. And he, he said that he will stay with humanity until the last weary wanderer, the last pilgrim, and has reached up, so it means for eons and creations. He stays with the planet. And uh, this is uh, the bluish sphere, this uh, like an ocean of bluish light. It is also um, this light of uh, shining forth from the background, from out of the black comes then the blue and the white, and the, the radiant white there. And this uh, I uh, tried to depict here in this image. Verke has said, uh, the Lords of the Flame, as you mentioned. The Lords of the Flame, yes. Mm. I thought that what was on his head was like all the Kumaras who came from Venus. Yes, it comes from via Venus to Earth. And he also, this is a group of beings who came, as it said, 80 million years ago to Earth. Most of them went back to Venus, but a group stayed on the planet and he is the eldest of them. Lilian says beautiful. <laughs> and uh, Anna? Thank you. Hello, everyone. Wonder, Ludger, if you could speak more on the White Islanders. When I hear White Island, yes. I think of Shambhala, I, when, I, when, but yes. I also think I of can, the life uh, waves. That's when you go to seek a doctrine. And, and uh, the, the teachings there. Um, there um, we are in a series of um, 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 waves of humanity, which Blavatsky called races. And the very first race were the White Islanders. These were beings which, as per our understanding, were not at all in the uh, physical as we understand it. They were just uh, a sphere, you can say a shadow, a shadow of light, uh, which um, is um, not uh, has not yet descended to the physical. And it said that these beings uh, merged into the second race. They did not disappear, but uh, they came down into the beings of the second race, the Hyperboreans. And uh, from the this get, got denser. And then millions of years later, from these developed again a denser state, uh, the Lemurians. And after aeons again, at this time, about Lemurian time, uh, beings from higher sphere came down because from humanity they could not develop upwards. They got stuck on the planet and therefore the so-called fallen angels or the um, the Agnishvatas or the Lords of the Flame came down to the planet to lift uh, humanity up and to give us the spark of light. We are uh, these, uh, so uh, those who have received the spark of light, the spark of um, Prometheus fire, which he brought from God to stole from the gods and gave it to the humans, and so that the humans could start thinking and become free beings. And this caused a lot of conflict. That's, there was a part of uh, um, the, the devas which were much against it to give this to the humans. They said they make nonsense with it, but uh, they still they gave it. And during all, uh, they said it speeds up, the suffering will speed up evolution. And so it was with humanity and the white islanders, uh, the beings, are we as well, because it was a continuity. The beings did not as such go away, but they came into the flow of the later uh, um, races. Although th this intervention, which came from above from Venus, uh, through Sanat Kumara and the group of beings, they uh, were not from our a group of souls from the earth, not the prisoners of the planet, but they came free down to earth to help us and assist us for ascent. And so uh, these are different um, uh, lines in, in the background. And so these white islanders, um, in a way, the white island, the, the earth when it was created, 
It was not, it was an etheric form and um, the, the pole, the North Pole was oriented uh, to the sun. It was like a half orange. The axis was directed to the sun and the topmost was the pole. And this was what later became the White Island. And uh, in Lemurian time also the axis changed and uh, the, the lower pole formed. Uh, in, a, in a way uh, where uh, this, um, in, in the previous states, there was not, uh, people, uh, it says that people think uh, because of what they found in the stones, they know how old things are. But this is only a condensation of earlier um, uh, globes, globe change which reflected down in matter as uh, the structures from the previous chain. And um, this, uh, um, very uh, subtle state of uh, the planet. Uh, there the top, the Sasrara is Shambhala, but this is, was the pole. And the White Island, there was a lake area at the time, and in this middle was this White Island also. But what is now Gobi was at that time um, um, the North Pole, but there was no South Pole. So you cannot speak about the South Pole. It was a half orange. And in, in etheric, uh, uh, like a jelly uh, kind of matter, it, it says, uh, and um, so it was a process about millions of years, which solidified, but uh, it says also that from our exoteric understanding from science, we get lost in these uh, processes. You can understand it from an occult understanding. And when you see uh, these condensation processes and this descent, it, you think the souls are um, de developed from the bottom up, but it was coming the, the part of what we call mankind, manas principle, it came from uh, uh, top down. And so this came together from two sides into the human being. Cheryl shares, uh, Ludger, your images are beautiful and full of spiritual symbols. I would love to see an astrological calendar made of these. Did you understand and hear that, Ludger? Partly the beginning, I could not get, I have here an implant in my head uh, to understand. I've lost nearly hearing, and so I'm using electronic means to communicate. So Cheryl, Cheryl said, your paintings are beautiful, Ludger. I would love to see an astrological calendar with your paintings on it. Just do it. It is free on the web. Everybody can download anything. I don't charge anything. Anybody can do anything with the paintings. They are not mine. They are free. And they so, were given, but they are not, I do not belong. They do not belong to me. So when we, when we love something, when we want something, uh, Ligger says, well, then do it, right? It sounds like Master Kumara, right? <laughs> <laughs> One thing which I wanted to ask, we did a recording. In this recording, there were disturbances. I have no software and with which Mumbi spoke to, had no skills and uh, a software. And I decided not to buy a software to do also this editing. I will either put it as is on site or um, we uh, will find somebody who cuts out these disturbances. So it might be another kind of group work. Well, I think we need to stop now. Are there yes, any let's go on to the in invocation. So uh, the last slides, we are not yet in the state of total finishing. We start, we, uh, we conclude with a prayer. Before we speak this prayer, I give you this a short explanation. We have the Chintamani. This comes also in this invocation. It says, I, I speak first and explain so that you can speak it with understanding. Uh, we bow down to the wisdom of the East. The East is in one aspect uh, on the planet, the wisdom from where the planet came, uh, the, 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 uh, on the planet where the wisdom came from, but it is our Agnya center in us. So we bow to the wisdom of the East is here. 
the love of the South, the South is our heart center. The strength of the West is our base center. The will of the North is our Sasrara, the head center. And there below, which is also called the jewel in the lotus, is Chintamani, above the head center. And then the great guardian dog below is the, the one, uh, uh, it is Sirius. It is at the bottom, it is uh, at the base center, the three-headed hound and uh, the, the dog star. And uh, so this is a great guardian dog below, uh, Dottatreya, Sirius energy. And the Lord of I am the center, this is in our heart center and in our being, we have the flame. And, but we are not conscious, so with the invocation, may we be raised to the kings of beauty. Also the earth is on the way to be raised to the kings of beauty. Since we heard before, it is not yet a holy planet. So I intonate it and you can speak with it as in, with the consciousness uh, and of bowing down. And when you bow down, you receive. We bow down to the wisdom of the East. We bow down to the love of the South. We bow down to the strength of the West. We bow down to the will of the North. We bow down to the headlight Chintamani above. We bow down to the great guardian dog below. We bow down to the Lord of I am, the center. May we be raised, may we be raised May we be raised to the kings of beauty. We will meet again in this first cycle on 19th of August at the same time and under the same um, uh, long in the login details. And we communicate about the Telegram channel, but when you go to this uh, link, I upload it there, a PDF which I will always update. So there's not a special website, but this uh, Aquarian Salon PDF will always contain the information details. So this is the date for the next Aquarian Salon. And in the background, you see a beautiful photo of a uh, star photographer from Texas, which I found on Wikipedia for free, for free use. It is like the Aquarian flow. It is called the Veil Galaxy. And the veil of the mother of the world is unveiled with Isis unveiled. The truth is behind the veil. So you see here the light of the flow of Aquarius through space and then uh, flowing down and with this energy we will meet again in Leo time in August. <clears throat> mm -hmm.